Hi there, I'm Michael Hill with Canine Chronicle TV and I'm here today with Miss Amy Booth. How are you, Amy? I'm good, thank you. How are you, Michael? I am really great. And today I'm so excited to talk to you. We're gonna focus specifically on the part of your life where you were involved with juniors and how that set you up for everything else you've done since then. So why don't we start with how you first got involved in that part of the sport? Oh, um, I don't know how many people know my history, but I started showing dogs before I was old enough for junior handling. Um, my parents bred and raised uh, Britneys. Well, actually they weren't really the breeders as much as they were the stud dog owners. And, um, but they had some really great dogs. They started in obedience. Uh, Walt and Joe Schellenbarger, which are Gretchen Schultz's parents, all of them are deceased now, so that's the history of it. Um, wow. They um, found my parents at a dog show while they were competing in obedience and told them that their Britneys were so good they should show them. So they kind of taught my parents, which then taught me. I'm the okay. youngest of six, so I had to go to the dog shows with my parents because my brothers and sisters didn't want to watch me. And um, it uh, evolved. I won the Brittany National when I was nine years old. I had a oh dog that was one month older than I was. So, um, and it was <clears throat> way back now, I'm gonna age myself, way back in 1980. So had wow. none of that happened, I probably wouldn't be where I am today. But definitely at that point, I wasn't old enough for juniors. At that time, you had to be 10. So okay. um, the next transition was showing in juniors I had to wait a little bit because that dog was retiring he was a veteran and so I got a son of his which was my first um juniors dog Brittany so it was Brittany's through all of juniors or did you show other breeds as well um towards the end of juniors I showed well actually my parents very very good friends in Dalmatians I showed a couple Dalmatians in juniors um uh Carol Haywood and um all these people have passed away now. Um, Dalwood was their kennel name. Um, anyway, um, gosh, I'm aging myself. Um, anyway. You're uh, carrying so on the I legacy. Did, I did have a Dalmatian in juniors was one. Her name was Gail. And then my last year of junior handling, I showed a Doberman Pinscher. I was working for um, Bill Shelton and he was mm. a professional handler at the time. We had lots of giant schnauzers and Dobermans and, um, um, our my grooming partner was Linda Raymond of O'Reilly's Dobermans, and she gave me one of her Dobies to show my final year in junior. So, long story short, I showed three breeds. Yeah, you covered a lot. What was that experience like for you, like at the beginning, coming from just being like you know with your parents at the dog show in a very kind of family aspect to transitioning to like other breeds and working for handlers and being more competitive was it something that was very natural for you or did it take time to figure out what was you were wanting from the sport honestly since the beginning of going to dog shows I was obsessed with dog shows um I don't know the, the little itty bitty fold up chairs for kids I yeah. had one and my mother used to say go study the handlers and when I think you're good enough yeah. I'll let you show and so that's what led up to being able to show when I was nine, but I swore I could um, mimic some of the best of the best handlers, go back to my setup and I pretend that my Brittany was this breed or that breed. And I would show yeah. my hand, my parents, my version of this handler or that handler. I mean, I did impressions of Joe Waterman, Corky Vroom, Sue Vroom, Bruce Schultz, Gretchen oh Schultz, um, oh my God. Tom Tobin. Those were all like the greats of, um, my yeah. day so I did I started in doing um uh mimicking those professional handlers and quirky room was like well known for being the fastest one to set up his dog so I could do that really fast and it was it was a lot of fun but in oh. junior for me maybe different than other kids I never thought of junior handling as like a career junior handler I yeah. did it to train my dogs and mm -hmm. I wanted to show um my ability to train an unruly Brittany and to manage an unruly Brittany, how to get them to, to move right. Um, right. As soon as I felt like my dog was super trained, I would move on to the next one. Um, mm. Because for me and for what my parents instilled in me, uh, junior handling was 
showing your ability as a handler. And as soon as things got too robotic or too um, uh, routine, sure. you no longer showed how you can handle a situation or a dog or a temperament or anything like that. So that was it's really always, keeping yourself challenged. Yeah, always important to me. And maybe even now when I judge juniors, I wanna see a little bit of a challenge and the ability to handle the challenge. I think that's a great point because it's not really a like life is not about just, you know, getting to a point where you flatline and you're there. I mean, even as a at your position where you're at now, I'm sure you're always still learning and still improving your craft. What are some things outside of the specific dogs that you also were challenged by, um, you know, whether it's like with working with adults or the competition? Uh, the, probably one of the most challenging things uh, was when I started working for the professional handlers as well, um, keeping my mom happy, doing uh, my job for the handlers. You know, I came to the dog shows with my um, family and it was a family sport, but I was so excited about this opportunity to learn from these professional handlers and keeping that in balance, um, making sure I showed up for for both of them. Um, and um, I think it's important as a kid in dog showing it, to keep your mouth quiet and to learn and to um, never think you know it all or never have an attitude that you're above it all because you should be a sponge. You should be seen and not heard, but I'm really old school. I mean, Michael, I really hope I don't offend anyone with my views, but I really um, admire the kids that I see and I'm not hearing or watching an attitude from. Um, sure. Some of that bothers me today. And I know that my mother would have grabbed me by the ear if I'd have <laughs> <laughs> like that. But I definitely think managing, you get to a point in junior handling where you do think you know a lot and yeah. uh, managing, you don't really, you have a lot more to learn and continue to show respect for the handlers and everyone that's willing to continue to teach you. What were some memorable lessons that other handlers or dog professionals gave you while you were in juniors? Um, while I was in juniors, um, never to take any day too seriously. You know, tomorrow is another day. Um, it was one person's opinion. Um, the handling wins and losses, but uh, most of all, I really enjoyed learning the care and um, well-being of the animals. And in case mm. this happened, do this. In case that happened, yeah. do that. I love that I have that as a resource in my memory bank, all of these um, uh, ways to help a dog or ways to help a situation if you have a dog not feeling well, things like that. I really love that. Because that's the number one priority, I think, which it's like with a, if you're a soccer player or a tennis player, your equipment's there, but you're, it's not something that's living and breathing that has its own life and needs as well the entire time. Absolutely. You know, with the dogs, they always come first and mm -hmm. we may be even more exhausted at the end of the day, but we've done our job when we've completely taken care of them in any situation that has arisen in a given day for them. Hmm. And I also, I believe you also worked in some other kind of capacities before you went on to the full-time professional handler, number one dogs, all the stuff <laughs> possible. Um, but in those instances that weren't dog related, did you ever apply what you had learned and experienced in juniors in those work situations? Yeah, you learn discipline for sure. In, in juniors, you learn time management you learn um, priorities. So yes, all of those things you take in. I became a, I went to college and was a d business systems administrator, um, business systems analyst. I worked on computer systems um, for a variety of companies. Um, and it was one of those things where I, I grew up pretty bright in school, did a good job in school, but um, the love of dogs and what could I really do in the sport of dogs. So it was always weighing those two things. So it did become a point in time where I was given the opportunity with a, a very great owner to show a great dog and see if I could, or if I did have what it takes 
to show the dog to the best of its ability. So definitely all the little steps I learned in juniors went into that first dog that changed my career and um, that that dog was, you know, that was my job, that dog. Yeah. And then the rest is history. <laughs> yes, for sure. Um, I think I was at that time, I had just started dabbling and breeding smooths, but the smooth breeding program hadn't really sparked until um, a little, a couple of years after that. I had my first top winning dog was a golden retriever female and mm. um, Monica was her name, the impeachable offense. <laughs> and, <laughs> then, and then right after her was, um, uh, Tux. Tux was born and he was um, um, my probably my first top winning real big winning dog and um, definitely the priority of his mate his well-being and everything yeah. that I learned in junior handling to be ready for every situation time management priorities all of that definitely rolled right into him and then the ability to sustain that with other dogs like Dodger and number one and also having, yeah. you know, <laughs> countless other ones like that, I'm sure yeah. is rooted in that initial experience, right? Yes. My biggest thing that I can advise anyone, if you get a dog like a Dodger and you're on the roll for number one dog in America and you, you just have to enjoy it because before mm -hmm. you know it, it's over and you're on to the next dog and it's such a high and we're always going to the next show, the next show and we're pushing what we can do if I could go back and do something over, I would enjoy what I was doing with Dodger a little bit more. Yeah, just soaking in that performance side of things and the yes. bond with the dog and, and just yes. the ride. Some of, some of the shows started bleeding into each other and I wish that there were a little bit more special moments and yeah. that I took the time for that. Oh, now I guess in conclusion, what would you say would be some advice you could give somebody who's either um, considering involvement in juniors or actively in juniors right now to uh, capitalize on that experience to the best of their ability? Uh, I do think that juniors and working for professional handlers kind of go hand in hand. Um, mm. I don't think that you learn the whole big pictures of dog shows unless you do the apprenticeship um, and I was telling someone the other day, you know, um, when you go to college and you're going to become a doctor, after you get, you become a doctor, there's all those in years of being an intern where you don't really get the pay. You don't really get what you deserve, but you're working these long hours. And when you work those long hours, you learn all the what ifs, then that kind of yeah. scenarios. And I think that that is irreplaceable in the sport of dogs the knowledge that you can learn and the long hours of putting in for the betterment of a team of dogs um, I think that is huge for um, young people to learn to respect what the professional handlers that have a truck full of dogs really have to go through to have a successful truck um, I, I think that goes hand in hand with how to master your own dog in junior handling and how to mm. give the best performance on your own dog in junior handling. I think when you put those two things together, you come out with a lot of knowledge and a lot of skill set. Especially if you're already going to the dog show already too, you know. Correct. Correct. You definitely have to be prepared for long hours, lots of work, um, little sleep. Um, but um, I do think it pays off in the end. I think um, it's kind of adding to your resume per se. Yeah. I love that analogy with the doctor because it's really like it's an investment in the experience for Correct. what you can do in the future. Correct. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Amy. It was so great to hear about your experience and to see you guys doing well. Good luck at your future dog shows and we'll see you soon. Uh, thank you, Michael. Good to see you too. And thank you for having me. Always a pleasure. Bye. Bye.